you so much for tuning in to my newest video. I forgot to say, this is Lauren from Speak From The Heart. It's like my, it's like my script. But I am back with another video. If this is your first time viewing a video, welcome. If you are a returning viewer, hey. How you doing? It's good to see you again. We'll jump right into today's video. I'm going to be discussing some tips that I think are super helpful if you're wanting to transition from being a pediatric SLP to a medical SLP. I love both um, ends of the spectrum. That's the thing I love about our profession is we can really work with different populations and different settings and it's, it's, it's truly amazing. So just some backstory. I completed my CFY with pediatrics outpatient, private practice, um, so a lot of autism, Down syndrome, articulation, phonological disorders, language disorders. It was very fun. I felt like, you know, I could really be like my creative child at heart self working with kids. Um, and it was exciting, but I really knew I wanted to work with adults. I just wanted to have that experience. And so transitioning out of having, you know, purely pediatric experience as my career, to working in medical SLP was a little bit challenging. Right now I'm working in outpatient rehab and I absolutely love what I do. I see a lot of dysarthria, aphasia, apraxia, dysphagia, voice disorders, cognitive communication disorders, you name it, I'm pretty sure I've seen it. And these are just some of the tips that I use and also some things I think would be super helpful. I really do love working with pediatrics, so I don't want anyone to think like, oh, she doesn't ever want to work with kids. Like, no, that's not me. I love the babies. Um, but right now in my career, I'm just really loving working with adults. So let's jump right in. So number one is to find a mentor. So this goes for if you're maybe a student and you're looking to do a CFY in a medical uh, setting, or if you're already in a pediatric setting and you're looking for a medical, find a mentor, find someone in your area, it doesn't even have to be in your area who works as a medical SLP. So if you're looking to work in acute care, find someone who's working in acute care. Um, same thing goes for SNFs and outpatient and you know, wherever you're trying to work, find someone who's been there, who's seasoned, you know, that's been working for a while so they can really give you information, good information about that particular setting and maybe some things that you would be seeing as a clinician. You could also look on various Facebook groups. So, you know, you can put a little hey, I'm in this area, I'm really looking to network with an outpatient therapist. Is there anybody there? There's so many SLP groups. Um, specifically, there are two medical groups that I can think of off the top of my head. Um, I think it's called the Medical SLP Forum and Adult Rehab Speech Therapy. Don't quote me on that. I will, I will link it somewhere here with the correct name, but I would definitely say get you a mentor, okay? So you can know a little bit more about what you're desiring to do. My next tip kind of goes in hand with mentoring or finding a mentor, but also shadowing. So trying to get into a medical placement and shadowing the speech therapist. Now, the thing about grad schools, we typically do um, two placements, two clinical placements. One is typically pediatric fo focused and the other one's typically like adult focused, but maybe you just didn't get the placement that you really wanted to do. So I would recommend, again, reaching out to the therapy department of your choice, whether it's a local hospital or a SNF and asking if you can shadow. Now, typically that process may be a little bit lengthy. You'll probably have to, you know, verify your shot records and, um, you know, get your flu shot depending on what season it is. But I think it's very valuable if you can. Now, if you are already employed as a pediatric SLP, obviously that's a little difficult, but most medical settings are, you know, open 24 seven, hospitals never close, SNFs never close. So you may be able to actually shadow on a, it's like a Saturday or a Sunday as well. But that way, again, you're really seeing what you may see as a uh, speech language pathologist in that particular setting. My next tip is apply to everything you see. So let's say you've just graduated or maybe you've been working as a pediatric SLP. You don't really have much medical experience apply to every job you see you know now obviously if you're like hey i do not want to work in a SNF or i do not want to work in acute care don't apply to something that you know you won't enjoy but if maybe it's 
outpatient instead of inpatient and you know, vice versa. Um, I would say apply for it. The thing is you have to get experience and the, the thing about some of these bigger companies like hospitals is if they see that you don't have any medical experience, they can be a little bit leery as far as hiring you. So I would make sure to apply to whatever you see, you know, even if it's like part-time, I would apply to it. So at least you're getting that experience as a medical SLP. And the thing is, you know, medical SLP jobs sometimes are few and far between, especially depending on what area you're in. So you may have to travel, you know, if you're, if you don't mind that, you may have to travel a little bit, but if that's really what you want to do, you'll make it work, I promise you will. So the next one, the next tip is PRN. PRN jobs are amazing. PRN is such a great way to develop your skills as a medical SLP while you may be in pediatrics. So again, if you are working in pediatrics right now with a goal of being a medical SLP, apply to PRN jobs. And PRN jobs, it's, I, I don't know what the Latin is, it stands for a Latin term, but it just means like on an as needed basis. So for example, if you are doing PRN work with a hospital, maybe the main SLP calls out, you may be called in to work a couple of hours. So it's not like a promised, hey, you'll work this day, this day, and that day, but it does give you some flexibility for one. Um, it's a great way again to learn some of the skills of a medical SLP. And when you do go, maybe you see something full-time, you already have some experience while still working your full-time pediatric job. Now students, you know, if you're graduating, you're about to graduate, obviously you can't do PRN work as a student, but if I am correct, I believe you can do maybe, I think maybe you can do PRN as a CF. I'm honestly not too sure. I would definitely ask ASHA. ASHA has a helpline. I would call them to make sure. I don't want to tell you anything incorrect. Um, but if you are an established clinician, definitely, I would, I would definitely do some PRN work. Get those skills sharpened before applying to a medical job. All right, and my last tip is to attend trainings. And when I say trainings, I mean specialized trainings that are related to medical SLP. Now, you may, again, if you are a student, sometimes you're not able to do some of these trainings. I will say LSVT, which is the Lee Silverman voice treatment uh, for people who have Parkinson's disease. You can attend that training as a student and become certified as a student, which I did not, I didn't know about that as a student. So I was kind of upset, but that is a great option if you're trying to become a medical SLP as a student, you know that's your goal is to go ahead and do the LSVT certification. You can do it online. And it's, I mean, it is a little pricey, but it's its for you, investment. You have to invest in yourself. And I believe you can write it off on your taxes. Um, but I would say that's a really good one for students. If you are working with pediatrics, and again, your goal is to work in a medical setting, do some of these trainings that are available. Most likely your company will not cover it because it doesn't relate to the population you're working with. But just like I said before, it is an investment in yourself and in your skills as a speech language pathologist. So look for things that maybe you're really interested in, vital STEM, fees course, MBS, IMP. There's so much out there for us. And the, you know, the unfortunate thing is that these certifications, these trainings are very expensive. So maybe trying to do maybe one or two a year. But that way, again, you're, you're making yourself marketable and you're learning more so you can apply those skills when you finally become an, a medical SLP because that's your goal and you will attain it. You will. <laughs> and piggybacking off of trainings. Look, I really should be getting sponsored by some of these people I always shout out. I don't think I've actually shouted out this company, but I love them. So speechpathology.com is a wonderful website you do have to pay. It is $100 a year, but you get unlimited access to CEUs for literally every area of speech language pathology. Everything. Like, everything. Um, I love speechpathology.com. Now, as a CF, when you do CEU courses, your, your CEUs don't count yet. But I will say just for the fact that they're free and you can search for, you know, um, maybe treatment treatment techniques for aphasia or 
the efficacy of strengthening exercises for dysphagia. You can literally look for whatever you want and find a course about it. And you can you can mention that. Like when you go on interviews, you can mention that you've been viewing CEU courses and doing additional research for this particular topic or that particular topic. I would definitely create a membership, especially if you're trying to transition to medical SLP. So you can start viewing some of those medical CEU courses and put that towards your knowledge bank and also make yourself marketable as you go on interviews. So those are my tips. Um, I'm sure there are more, but those are the ones that I wrote down and wanted to discuss. Again, I did transition from pediatric SLP to medical SLP and I really love what I do. I think it's just, it's just awesome that we have this variety in our field that we can work with kids, we can work with geriatrics, it's, it's amazing. And so I hope that this was helpful. If you guys have any questions about, again, that transition, please feel free to leave comments below or message me on Instagram. Uh, make sure you subscribe to my channel and like this video, share it with a friend, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.